temas espirituales. Hoy somos bendecidos con la presentación de una de estas reveladoras conferencias titulada Salvemos nuestro planeta, elimina la producción de carne, extractos de las charlas de la maestra suprema Chin Hai, parte 3 de 3, en, entre la maestra y los discípulos, dada en inglés. Hi, Master. Hi. There seems to be many planets that have undergone this planet-threatening crisis that Earth is going through due to the eating habits of its inhabitants. Why is meat mm. eating such a hindrance to the evolution of the planet? Well, you see, only the low-level consciousness of those planets that have inhabitants with low-level consciousness have been uh, destroyed or uh, ruined. Not the high-level one, eh? Okay. Of course, there are countless of them. I'm very sorry to say. Maybe I have it here somewhere. Oh. Around five billion planets have been destroyed or in similar fate as Venus or Mars, yes. Did Maya instigate this same test over all planets? with the meat-eating habit and the destruction of the planet. Yes, yes, that's a Maya work, of course. The king of the devils, the uh, chief of the negative force, they want to destroy the children of God. And if people are not listening to the divine intuition and our spiritual guidance, then of course they fall into this trap. Surprisingly, so easy to fall. Yeah. understand. Thank you, Master. You are welcome. And were you ever on Venus? No. No. But uh, I have been on other Venus. Yeah? Not that Venus. Yeah. Uh, there were four Venuses in our galaxy. Yeah? They are so named because they are similar. Yes? Yeah? Similar in size, similar landscape, similar beauty. They call them Venus. Yeah? Okay? And two of them were destroyed. One is destroyed, and we still see now, you know, with the hot gases all over on the planet, and all the life is terminated. And there's another Venus also destroyed, completely, completely exploded, completely gone to dust in a sudden moment. And now we still have two more Venuses, which are very beautiful, much more advanced in technology than our planet. And uh, luckily, on the Venus, yeah, the population up there, only one fourth of them are eating meat, and also very sparsome. And the rest, yeah, three fourths, they're all vegetarian wow. or vegan. Therefore, they still can have their planet. The other two planets, uh, one is still there but boiling hot, and the other completely incinerated by explosive gas. Understand? Yeah. Because uh, there are some poisonous gas that has been built up also underneath of the surface of that Venus, the second one. Not the hot one now, but the second one, the exploded one. Poisonous gas has been built up inside the core of that planet. The planet has an empty core inside, and the poisonous gas has also been built up in there, as well as built up in the atmosphere of the planet. And that's why uh, that Venus, I just say the fourth Venus, was completely gone, like dust. Understand. Exploded, completely disappear. And the whole planet, not just people. They didn't have time at all. Within a few weeks' time, the whole planet was destroyed. Yes, destroyed. Because of the poisonous gases, yes, from livestock. 
of course, it triggers all the gases yeah, from the ocean, from the warm ocean. As you know, it's similar to our planetary problem right now. It happened too fast for them. And uh, they did not uh, really have time. They did not really care about this vegetarian diet. They did not really go into any spiritual dimension. Mars was a little better, you see. <laughs> but this one, no. In this Venus, the hot Venus, even the core of uh, the planet was also full now of hot and poisonous gas. So no life can exist. Maybe those microscopic life was is useless for us or for any human to dwell there, if you could even get there. The size of the uh, disintegrated Venus is similar to Mars. But the other two Venus are very cool, very good. They have no war at all. And uh, they have less meat-eater population, you see. So more or less, they are balanced with the karmic law, yes. You see, some time ago I said if we have like two-thirds of the planet population vegetarian, then we could have saved the planet too. But now it's too late. Now we need the whole planet population to be compassionate. Vegan be the best. As long as we still have cruelty and uh, immoral conduct, especially cruelty, especially killing action between each other or to a lesser, a weaker being like animals. If any planet who have harbor or who practice such a lifestyle, they will also have to face uh, the threat of extinction, like what we are doing right now. Let's hope our planet survives first. Yeah. And then, after that, everyone will be astonished about what kind of invention we will come to be able to experience. And then we can experience other planetary scenery or visit them, or they can visit us also. That's and we wonderful. can have uh, interplanetary connection. It will be very nice. I have a question about the swine flu. I would like to know that um, are those planets who were destroyed in the past, like Venus or Mars, have they been experiencing such pandemics like swine flu? Oh, yes, and more, yes. And the swine flu is nothing yet, baby. We will experience worse than that if we don't change our way of life. If we don't turn around and walk in the opposite direction, then we are heading toward destruction of all kinds. You see, planetary warming, yes, methane gas from all sides, from all sides now, not just from livestock, but because the livestock is trigger methane gas from all sides, from the riverbed, uh, from the permafrost, from the bed of the ocean, from the mountains, from the dying forests. Do you understand? And even living forests, alive forests, if the atmosphere is too hot, the forests also cannot absorb CO2. And they could even release CO2 themselves as well. So we are surrounded by trouble. There's only one escape route that I have told you already. I wish there are several. There's only one. We wish. That's the path to go. Then maybe we still can have time. The head of Germany's Environmental Protection Agency also recommended everybody reduce their meat to yes. pre-war levels in order to, to reduce emissions. Well, and not just reduce, just uh, eliminate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can eat it four days a week, why not just eat the whole week? Anyway, it's worth a sacrifice, even if you call that a sacrifice. All you do is just exchange that piece of meat for everything else that you treasure, mm -hmm. including your children, your planet, yes, your health. Mm -hmm. 
the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, the car that you even can continue to drive for a while until we change it, you know? Because if we eliminate animal livestock rising, mm -hmm. then all the methane, the major cause of global warming will be gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have time to eliminate the leftover of the CO2. And also nature will be healthy and absorb it all again. Mm -hmm. Not to talk about karma, spiritual, or moral standard, nothing. Physically speaking, it is like that. Mm -hmm. Scientifically, just no meat, no heat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very simple. Please be quick. <laughs> Please be quick before it's too late. I mean, the sooner the better, you know? Because... Uh, even if it doesn't affect you, it affects millions of other people. Every day, even, for example, Bangladesh, you know, every six minutes when I'm sitting here laughing with you, one house gone from their life. The house that they treasure, that they have memories, and the children and grandchildren are going to grow up in it. It's not just a nobody house. It is something in there. It's a history of a human's lifetime of work and emotion and love and family ties, you know? It's not just a number, like one house, and then one hour, 11 house, and keep counting like that. Even if it doesn't concern us, how can we sit here and eat meat, and then everybody else die for that little piece of meat that we eat, and then we don't even need to eat it. You won't die. You will only be more healthy, healthier, happier, and you can save the whole Human race and animals as well, every day up to 270 species are erased every day. And nobody cares or what. I mean, wait until it becomes our turn, then we say, oh, it's really urgent or what. No, we should not wait. Everybody else's disaster should be our disaster. Everybody else's house should be like our house. And when it's damaged, it should pain us just the same, like if we lose it. And their lives lost also. Their life savings is lost. And they come out and they become homeless. And become like a beggar. I have to, to rely on hand out to live. You know, there's more, no more dignity for them. They are hardworking people. They have home before. And because of the meat diet, everybody is losing their home in many different countries. Forty nations sinking or sunk already. Small nations. Maybe it's small, but it's a nation, no? Yes. I mean, how small is small? Monaco, like uh, five square kilometers? Yeah? How small is Vatican? Huh? One square mile, right? Okay? How small can a, an island be? Many islands bigger than that already sunk beneath the sea. Nobody cares because we don't live there. We don't see anything. All oh, they speak Chinese, I don't understand. Oh, they speak uh, Kiribati or whatever. We don't understand. Not possible. If we are human, we must have a heart. Otherwise, we are not human. We are like stone. Yeah? Even stone have heart. If they can show it. So it's about time people should live like a human. Huh? If we call ourselves human, we have to live a humane life, no? Even before our house collapse, we have to consider other people's house and stop the cause of it. We can do it, not like we cannot. We have the mean to. Especially the people who have house and live in so-called civilized society, they have money. Vegetable is even cheaper than meat, for God's sake. No, it's not, sorry. Because the subsidies for meat, because if they don't subsidize the meat industry, the hamburger will cost like $30. Instead, it costs only 99 cents. So everybody eat because it's cheap also. You see what I mean? And everybody else who eat meat or don't eat meat has to subsidize for that money, and then they buy it, they think it's cheap. They are eating their own money too. See what I mean? It's all cheating. It's all illusion. It's nothing as real as it look. So instead of subsidize the meat industry, must subsidize organic, vegan, organic farming. So it's all in the hands of the lawmaker and us who have to go out and inform people as much as we can. But you see, how many people can we inform with flyers and all that, you know? Even with the Supreme Master television, some people don't have TV. Some remote area, they don't have TV. 
or they don't have the mean for computer. Or if they have computer, it's too slow or something. They can't get it. It's all kind of thing I can never take care of, I'm telling you. I did everything I can, but still somewhere is lacking something, you know, that they couldn't get it. They couldn't get the TV, the news. You see what I mean? So you cannot blame the people. They don't know. Just one lead to another, and they've been, uh, you know, indoctrinated into eating meat and drinking milk. Otherwise, they don't have enough muscle, protein, and all that. People are poor people. You know, nobody knows because everybody believes what the experts say, né? and the experts, they lobby and the government to say that. And the government, let's face it, the government also did not know. I'm telling you the truth. It's not like every uh, person sitting in the government office and know everything about nutrition and milk, and they don't know also. So if the meat industry lobbies some of the people in the government and uh, that people say, this meat is good, 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 and everybody, okay, good, good, good. Protein, you know, meat eating not only is detrimental to our health, it is the cause for us that we cannot get in touch with our true self also. You see, that's why most people, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. <laughs> they don't know why. Yeah, sometimes when their stomachs are empty and they're sincere or they're in sorrow, they're more connected with the inside. Yeah, and when their time is smooth and they drink and eat, they don't know anything anymore, so they disconnect again. You see, even the people who are not practicing the Kuan method, they're connected now and again with the Divine. Therefore, now and again, they can sustain their life on this planet and then continue like that. That's why they don't live very well, but they do live. You see what I mean? Like a person who is sick, but not completely dead, still can move around, but not completely well. That's like that. See? So the person who completely connects with himself and practice that connection more and more every day, that he has more abundance, yes, more health, yes, more clarity in the head, more wisdom, more compassion, which is himself. Compassion is not from heaven. Compassion is not from the vegetarian diet. Compassion is inherent within all of us. The vegetarian diet is just a proof of it, that you have compassion, that you don't want to eat others. How come they, they survive and the other Venuses didn't? How, how yes. does their evolution allow them to continue? Yeah, because they are more virtuous. The other two Venus, they were living a vicious life. They live in vice. They do not uh, know God. They do not respect anything that they don't see. And they concentrate more on developing their material comfort. Therefore, they had too much comfort. They had anything they want. Everything is almost like heavenly life, except devoid of spiritual, moral, and divine quality. And not only that, they persecuted anyone who dare to oppose them or mention anything about the invisible quality of heaven. Yes? Oh, well, God, anyone who is living a virtuous life, this is like state enemy. They hunt them down, they kill them mercilessly. It's a terrifying uh, place to live for anyone who has a little conscience. Their conscience is zero, yes? Their moral standard is zero. Their tolerance for God and divinity is zero. So it was because of this, and the meat diet, it combined that destroyed the other two planets. Whereas the two surviving planets, although they still have some percentage of meat eater, one fourth, twenty-five percent people still have meat, but a very less, less degree. Not like they have it every day or three meals a day. It's not like that. Even then, they have reverence in their heart, yes? And they are trying to also go into more merciful lifestyle, compassionate vegan diet. So the balance is very, 
very well in check, you see? <laughs> Three fourths are vegetarian, a vegan, and the uh, one fourth is meat eater, but very less degree, very less quantity. And then they all worship God, they revered the spiritual persons or beings or practitioners. They encourage moral behavior within their society and they teach moral obligation, compassionate lifestyle, merciful attitude in school from kindergarten already, by example, and by positive encouragement. In school, they teach already children how to be kind to each other, how to be kind to their planet, how to be kind to other co-inhabitants, like animals, you see? So animals and men living in harmony with each other. And children have been taught already moral standard, mercy behavior, since childhood already. So they grow up, become wonderful citizens, yes? The meat eater and the meat provider, they live in remote area, <laughs> you know, shamefully, far away from the sight of the people. And they don't encourage that in the public. Just like right now, we forbid smoking in the public, over there forbid meat eating in public. Therefore, even the meat eater, they feel ashamed and they know it's wrong. And even they still have some, but they always try to minimize it. You understand me? Yes? Yes, Master. Meat eater over there is allowed, <laughs> but it's like outcast, <laughs> and they feel it. Um, but some people are not as developed as others, so they just tolerate it. But because the numbers do not outweigh the vegetarian, therefore their planet merit and uh, peace atmosphere is prevalent. Their planetary merit is in balance, overweight balance. Yes. So even uh, one fourth of the people are meat eater. You know, very little or less, but still, they are covered by the three fourths of the other benevolent energy. You see what I mean? Yes. Yes, master. And because the society as a whole already support a uh, compassionate vegan diet, and other meat eater, even though they do it, but they know it's wrong. And so they have repentance in their heart also. So that's uh, the way they preserve their planet. Not because they wanted to, maybe, because they know it's a way of life and they have been brought up like that since they were children. So they become very powerful in spiritual merit and thus they can protect their planet. If all this Venus population, of course, 100% of them vegetarian or vegan, then their planet will even be better better than just survive and prosper and progress and technologically superior like that, but will be superior, will be just like heaven in the physical dimension. Right now it's like, of course, like 80% heaven, hey, <laughs> or 70%. But if they all become vegan, then of course the planet will experience a much more <laughs> upliftment in the uh, spiritual dimension. And as the planet lifts itself up, as the population lifts their consciousness again up, there will be more and more miracles happen. There will be more internet access to all the corners of the world that has not been before. Or there will be more satellite service in different countries, in different corners of different countries. Then the more and more people will be informed and more and more will be uplifted. But nevertheless, their soul, listen, because we are interconnected. And uh, the frequencies of radio or televisions are also uh, permeated in the atmosphere. This kind of positive energy and constructive news, it will reach their recess of their mind. And they will somehow get it also, without even watching the Supreme Master television but in some way more subtle. Then they will also awaken. We just need to be patient and praying a lot, praying a lot.
to all the gods and goddesses, all the divine beings, all the angels, to help us, yes, to manifest themselves physically onto this planet and help each and every citizen of the world to awaken to a compassionate lifestyle so that they can, you know, escape from this dilemma that is terrifying everybody at the moment, be it swine flu or planetary uh, climate change. Yes, so we, yes, we have all the gods to thank, okay? Other gods. Thank you.